we visit on the schedule. The track may measure four tenths of a mile like many other venues that we visit on the 2024 Z-Max Cars Tour season, but this racetrack, with its configuration, it's got a bit of a tri-oval to it on the front straightaway. In fact, you can't really even call it a front straightaway. Drivers will tell you they have very little, if any time, going straight, even on the back stretch, as they have to set up for their trajectory to turn three. These drivers are going to be busy all night long, and this is going to provide a unique program for these Z-Max Cars Tour competitors. It is going to be an incredible night for sure, but let's go ahead and toss it down to the third member of our broadcast team. James, how are things looking down there in the pits? Good afternoon, Eric. Good afternoon, Blake, down here on Pit Road at New River All-American Speedway. Where there are a whole host of storylines that we can talk about entering tonight's National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 125. But the biggest one here every time we come to New River All-American Speedway is the asphalt. This is original pavement that's over 20 years old and by driver's oh. consent. This is one of, if not the most abrasive surface on the Z-Max Car Store presented by Sound Care. I went back and I looked at the data from last year's race. Brendan Queen set the pole fast time of 16.002 seconds last year when we visited in September. We got to the race, his fastest lap was half a second slower. And when they get into race runs and get into a green flag run, you can see lap times that are almost two seconds slower than what we see from the qualifying lap time. That's one of the biggest gaps that you'll find across any of the circuits that we visited in the series. Now, you two both mentioned the ST2 tire. It's a little bit different compound than what we brought here last year when we had the F45s. Drivers say that it's a little bit harder and the fall off is a little bit more gradual, but we don't necessarily know what the fall off point is and how these cars will race when they get there. So that's something a lot of these drivers are going to watch and figure out, but the main story and the goal remains the same. Conserve tires and do not go faster early. If you burn your tires up at the beginning of a green flag run, you likely won't have to challenge for the win at the end. It's a great talking point, and I think uh, something that if you've been watching racing over the last several years of this racetrack, you know that tire conservation is a big key right, to go. being successful here at this racetrack. But talking to many of these drivers down in the pit area with this new compound, with this Hoosier ST2 tire, there are a lot of questions. Are we going to see the degree of saving that we've seen in the past? Yeah, it's one of the big unknowns that we're going to find out the good old-fashioned way, and that's by lining them up and getting them ready to race here at New River All-American Speedway. As you see, some of the on-track practice sessions starting to wrap up as we inch closer to the start of qualifying. Last year's winner, Brendan Butterbean Queen, is going to look to go back-to-back -back in a place where he's been undefeated. We'll see him in the rest of the Cars Tour field. Hit the track for qualifying next.
Welcome back to New River All-American Speedway and all that we have set for you tonight here in the National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 250 for the Z-Max Cars Tour presented by Sound Gear. Again, you can see some of the local division practices starting to kind of come to their conclusion. I believe it's a couple of street stocks and one more Grand National Super Series uh, pacing through their laps uh, that will be taking place before we get started here with single car qualifying in the Z-Max Cars Tour presented by Sound Gear. And I know, Eric, this is a point that we tend to bring up every single time that we get to approaching single car qualifying. And it may sound like a broken record to a lot of race fans who tune in on Flow Racing every week, but how important qualifying has become in this series, how close it has become. Again, the margin of error last week at Hickory was just astounding how close that these drivers are and honestly taking a look at the practice charts not only for their practice day yesterday but also what we saw this morning through opening and final practice it is so close so competitive and I think everybody in this field knows that it is going to be just mere inches that decide this thing. How important is qualifying? We've held two races here prior. Both times the pole sitter has gone to victory lane. The driver who did it one year ago trying to go back to back at New River All-American Speedway, Brendan Butterbean Queen is standing by trackside with Pike. Butterbean, you have not lost at New River All-American Speedway in competition. I know that's the goal to keep that record in tap tonight, but compare this racetrack from last September to now, have you noticed anything that's changed either with the new SC2 tire or the track itself or anything that stands out as different just from the practice sessions? Yeah, I think obviously the tire is a curveball, just not knowing so many unknowns of how hard we can run, how long you can run, how far can you drop back. Uh, it's all stuff we hadn't had to experience yet because we hadn't been on a track this abrasive, um, but we knew it was coming. We've been really good. I mean, obviously our car pretty much like last year, so it's been pretty good right out the truck, but with this series, you never know. Everybody's getting better, and, you know, we've showed speed. I feel like our race trim's pretty good, and, and you know, about the time you feel really good, somebody goes out there and does something, so you start questioning things. But um, in my career, I've learned to just focus on my car and my team, and that's helped a lot, I feel like, to, to basically not start over-adjusting off of somebody else so we worked really hard on our race trim this weekend only made one mock run i think a lot of people made two um, so we worked hard on old tires and you know that's that's what pays obviously we'd like to get the pole and get that point you know to try to dig out of this hole we're in but at the same time uh i'd give up the pole to get the win this series only grows ever more competitive and repeating to get back to cookout victory lane is going to be even more difficult tonight for butterbean I think Butterbean made a great point right there. He said, digging it out of the hole that I'm in right now. He finished, or at least the hole as he describes it, was finishing 19th in the season opener at Southern National Motorsports Park. Now, that's certainly not the level of performance we've seen out of Butterbean in this Lee Pulliam performance team, particularly if you look at the second half of last year. But, Eric, that's how competitive this series has become, that one 19th place finish, and all of a sudden the, the world's falling apart almost to a degree. Yeah, and it, uh, interesting to hear him talk about climbing out of the hole he's in because of the result that he got last week at Hickory after moving up to second. He climbed from 19th in the standings all the way up to sixth in just one race his time. But as quickly as he gained that ground, Butterbean seems pretty aware of the fact that you could lose a chunk with a bad night or an off night just as quickly as you mentioned. But that team is starting to get right back to the form in which they're at. But you heard him mention the curveball that has been thrown to these teams about this tire. Nobody really knows just how far they can get away with pushing and if there's going to be enough left at the end of the race in order to be there for all the drivers to think they've got a shot to contend for the win. Well, again, I talked to each of the Lee Pulliam performance drivers earlier this morning, uh, standing together before they hopped in their cars for practice, and they were really talking about how things unfolded yesterday, that there were a lot of teams, including them, that could run 70, 80, 90 laps or so on the tires that they currently had, and they didn't quite look as bad as what they would have imagined with the F45s a year ago. You heard Brendan there kind of mention the fact that, well, this tire's a little bit of a curveball, and this change is something that these teams, I think you just give them a little bit of time, they'll get the, their handle on it, they'll know how to adjust and how they want to set up their race cars but for every single team out there I think you've seen kind of the differences between those who have figured out exactly what this tire kind of wants early on and those who are still trying to figure that out although I don't think they'll be out in left field for long with the quality mechanics and crew chiefs that we have here on these teams and how competitive it's become it's not going to take them long before they figure it out.
And I will say, even though, you know, we talk about the pole sitter has won both races so far this season, that's not indicative of how the race is planned out. Back in 2022, we had four lead changes amongst four different drivers. Last year, six lead changes amongst five different drivers. We mentioned Butterbean won this race one year ago. The driver who went to victory lane in the inaugural running at this racetrack is standing by with Pike. It's Connor Hall. It's a little bit of a different setup for Connor Hall now. New team, new colors. Fire suit's pretty similar. That thing has seen a little bit of luck. But when you look at the three races here, the two that have come before and, and then this, what's changed amongst the level of competition here in the Z-Max Cars Tour? I would say since 2022 when I joined, like I just feel like late mile racing as a whole has gotten like so much better. Like I feel like you used to come to some certain races and you kind of always had your couple guys that were always going to kind of be up front. And I feel like just as a whole sport, it's come, the technology's come a long way, the, you know, just the technology, the drivers, the teams, just kind of, you know, that ignition triangle almost for like what creates good competition. And uh, it's a lot harder to win these things. So I feel like that's what, you know, that's when we do get lucky and win these things. I feel like it means a lot more. And I feel like obviously Dale Jr., Harvick and, you know, Burton and then uh, Thomas Marks as the ownership group, they've done their part to try to grow the series. I think, you know, the teams are doing their part. I think everybody's just doing their part to make this as big of a deal as possible. And I think it's really starting to pay off as far as competition, exposure, and so forth. Connor Hall looking to build even more momentum after a strong start to 2024. Mentioned how important qualifying it has been in each of the two visits that we've had here in the Z-Max Cars Tour. We get started out with this driver who will be making his first laps and come around this time to see the green flag from our good friend and Brandon Willard and begin single car qualifying here for the Z-Max Cars Tour presented by Sound Gear. And driving the number 15 Leisure Time Reynolds Chevrolet out of Statesville, North Carolina, coming off an eighth place finish at Hickory Motor Speedway's first top 10 of that race tracks to number 15 of Ryan Millington. Get back on track after that eighth place finish and qualified and finished inside of the top 10 in his first appearance. The season opener a year ago. Checkered flag in the air. Milliton's going to clock in at a 16.037 to get us started. And Eric, from the times that we've been seeing, that's a time that I think we could see towards the top of the speed charts here. So a very solid opening lap there for the 15 of Ryan Millington. Indeed it was, and how about a very warm welcome back for this driver. In fact, one year ago to the day was when we last saw this racer in competition under the Z-Max Cars Tour banner. It was in a pro late model where she was contending for the win, now making a return of what is a late model stock car entered by that of Lee Pulliam Performance out of Fort Mill, South Carolina, and the JBL and Mobile One. Mincy's graphics number 55. This is Isabella Robusto coming down to complete her first time run. And that first lap will clock in about 59 thousandths off the lap laid down by that of Millington. This is Isabella's eighth career late model stock start. First at this track under the Z-Max Cars Tour. Best finish, however, was an 11th at Tri-County a couple years ago. Robusto is going to slow down just a little bit on that second time through. She will stand on the 16096 that she laid down the first time by. That was a car that was awfully fast to Hickory a week ago before losing an axle on the opening lap with Giovanni Ruggiero behind the wheel. But talked to Isabella earlier today. Great to see her back on the racetrack in a late model stock. And I think she's really ready to get things started here in 2024 in the Z-Max Car Store. Coming around to take the green flag this time. Third driver out here in single car qualifying. Pilots the number 45 Louisville Dryer Company Chevrolet. Simpsonville, Kentucky. This is Bryce Applegate who's behind the wheel. And you'll see Eric, especially in this form of qualifying, and if you watch races here in the past, you'll notice the lines that these drivers take, especially here in qualifying when you're going all out. It's gonna be a little bit different than what we'll see a little bit later on tonight. You see these cars kind of track off of turn number four there in a way that they won't typically do uh, once we drop the green flag, particularly in our first run. First time for Bryce Applegate is gonna put him fastest so far, 15.993. Yes, that he ends his run ahead of Ryan Millington and Isabella Robusto. How about a big one? He ends his run ahead of Ryan Millington and Isabella Robusto. 
How about a big warm welcome back to the driver who missed the race at Hickory one week ago after climbing into a Junior Motorsports NASCAR Xfinity Series ride and coming home with a strong fourth place finish. He's had top fives in both races here, 2022 and 2023. And he's, of course, our two-time and defending Z-Max Cars Tour champion. In the Bass Pro Shops, Junior Motorsports number eight, it is that of Carson Quapple who goes to the top of the charts and he is going to get a 15991 that first First time through by two thousandths of a second. Over that of Bryce Applegate. We'll see if Quapel can go faster yet as he comes to the checkers. And even with the tail whip coming to the line, he comes to the flag a little bit slower. So it will be a 15991 for that of Carson Quapel trying to make up some ground in the championship standings after missing the last go around at Hickory one week ago. Kind of seen a mixed bag in terms of drivers going out and either running that hot lap, their fastest lap on their first trip around this racetrack or get it done in the second. I'm sure this driver won't care which one. He just wants to be towards the top of the charts. And indeed he was when running at this racetrack one year ago. He led 47 laps in the race here at New River All-American Speedway in 2023 and driving this number 15 WG Speaks and Reem Ford for RNS Race Cars out of Mechanicsville, Virginia. This is Logan Clark, who again impressed at New River All-American Speedway, had his best run in his Cars Tour career up to that point. He bested that with his career best so far at Southern National Motorsports Park, which was a 13th place finish in the season opener earlier this season. And Clark right now, fifth fastest of the five cars that we've sent out. His second trip around will be a tick slower. Fox in is 16.126 for the five that we've seen so far. Sixth car that will enter the racetrack, making his fifth career Cars Tour late model stock start. Had a great qualifying effort at Southern National Motorsports Park. In fact, his worst qualifying effort in the first two races this season was sixth at Hickory last season. Driving the Mobile One and Toyota number 29 for Kevin Harvick Incorporated out of Hickory, North Carolina, is that of Brent Cruz. The time will populate on the left hand side of your screen. Let's go track side and hear from a driver who just got off the racetrack and Isabella Robusto. Isabella Robusto is back with the Z-Max Car Tour presented by Sound Gear, making her first start in competition in a year. Isabella, I know it's been a, a journey to get back here. How excited are you to just be back at the racetrack competing in late model stock car racing? I'm super excited. Um, I can't thank Toyota and JBL for helping me get out here today, but um, getting back in the late model stock yesterday after almost a year was really good. Um, feel pretty good in the car. We're kind of chasing a little problem, but I think we figured it out here before qualifying, so I'm ready for the race, and um, I think it's going to be who saves the tires the best, so hopefully I'm there at the end. What's your take on the SD2 and how you want to manage that? Um, it's definitely different than the F45s I'm used to, but I think this race will be a big learning, kind of know what the trend of it is. We haven't really done more than 10, 15 lap runs in practice, so um, I think I'll kind of learn throughout the race, but I think it's going to last better at the end of the runs. Definitely a slightly livelier paddock with Isabella back in it. You saw Brent Cruz go right to the top of the charts, 15.920 for the 16-year-old for KHI. And boy, was he impressive at Southern National Motorsports Park. And by the way, this driver was so impressive. Came back from multiple laps down to manage a fifth place finish at Hickory a couple weeks ago. He's second in the standings and he'll be second on the scoring charts here. His second time, not faster, but a 15.969, good enough for a second place effort and I think the best story that we have in the Z-Max Cars Tour this year. Perhaps both these drivers back to back and both what Mini Tyrell's been able to accomplish will see him continue to impress, I'm sure, later on tonight, as well as this number 16 car. Yeah, how about the driver who has started on the front row in both races so far this season? We mentioned Butterbean's climb up in the standings. This driver, 23rd to 7th by virtue of his podium last week at Hickory. Driving the Aaron Sales and Lease and Elliott Properties number 16 is that of Chad McCombie, who the first time by is going to go sixth fastest at a 16.086 with Cruz still the pace setter, but McCombie is someone who, even though he got that third place finished last week, still acknowledge the fact he's been fighting through adversity as he gets a little sideways off the corner. He's going to go a little bit faster that time through. Despite radio troubles at the start of last week's race, he fought through it all and got that podium finish. Unfortunately for now, in qualifying, he is sixth out of the V8 cars that have gone so far.
Working down the back straightaway right now. He's taken well to these late model stocks. And the Chad Bryant racing number 77 out of Ontario, Canada. This is Trayton Lapsevich. Comes out of turn number two for his first time in single car qualifying so far this afternoon. Again, mustered a ninth place finish at Southern National Motorsports Park in a 10th in Hickory just a week ago. Currently puts that number 77 fifth in the driver's standings and had an awfully good run in mock qualifying in final practice earlier today. First trip around for Lapsovich, gonna put him seventh fastest in that number 77 car. And checkered flag, can he go better? He will up into the top five, 15.999. Out of nine cars so far, the Chad Bryant Racing entry sits fifth. The ninth car to come on the racetrack to take time in Thunder Road Harley Davidson pole qualifying is a driver who has been off to a pretty strong start in 2024. Not a lot of experience here at New River All American Speedway. In fact, not a lot of experience with the Z Max Cars Tour. Fourth career start for the Mike Darn Racing number 11 in the per year tank lines. And Kenneth Daniel Roofing and GXS Wraps number 11 at a Littleton, North Carolina. This is Buddy Isles. As we watch Isles complete his time trial run, we'll go trackside back to Pike. Mini Tyrell, if y'all need to go back and watch the replay of last week's race at Hickory Motor Speedway on Flow Racing, this man drove through the field and rallied from multiple laps down to get a great finish. So, Mini, what is it going to take to replicate that or just, you know, stay up at the front the whole time at New River? Yeah, man, uh, that's uh, definitely the goal this weekend is to not uh, make those mistakes and uh, get penalized with some laps down. But, uh, you know, I just can't thank all my guys TTR enough. Brandon Butler, the crew chief's this thing, man. He does such a great job for me. And, uh, you know, everybody that's on the car that makes this thing go fast. And I uh, thought we had a pretty good good lap there uh, today. So hopefully it'll put us in the top seven or eight to uh, start this race. But, uh, you know, we'll see. We're just going to have to ride and take care of our stuff and be there at the end. Mini currently second on the board. Second on the board since that number 81 cars. We welcome back a driver who you mentioned it earlier on in the broadcast, Eric, is undefeated here at New River All-American Speedway. Ran two races here last year. He won the $20,000 to win Battle of the Stars. He followed that up with the Z-Max Cars Tour win later on in the fall. And he goes right to the top of the charts on his second go around. Brendan Butter being queen, 15.879. Dips down into the 15.8s. He'll try to do one better on his next trip around. Gets the checkered flag from Brandon Willard, and indeed he will improve on his second lap. 15.867 for Brendan Queen, 53 one thousandths of a second. Clear of Brent Cruz for the top spot. Trying to rewrite the storybooks as they unfolded back in 2023. Brendan Butter being queen to the pole, but here is a driver who will certainly be on the radar to contend for that top spot. Three-time Cars Tour late model stock champion, and he is coming into the night fourth in championship points after being able to rally through the misfortune at Southern National and having a strong run at Hickory just outside the top five. This is, of course, the RNS race cars number six for that of Bobby McCarty, and he comes to the line third quickest at the stripe that time through in his Sterling Building Group and Black Acid Apparel and WG Speaks number six car. We'll see what McCarty's got here at the checkered flag. Needs a little bit more but it's not gonna happen McCarty sits third provisionally so McCarty third fastest as we welcome the next driver out onto the racetrack and you can kind of notice a couple of fans lean up in their seat a little bit a couple of waves across the New River All-American Speedway as they welcome back their local hero who's back in a late model stock for the first time since winning the track championship here one year ago at New River All-American Speedway. It's the first time that we've seen him on the Z-Max Cars Tour, drive the number 29 Pure Country Farm Chevrolet out of Kennedsville, North Carolina. This is Paul Williamson who brought this car out here on Monday to test and was kind of gauging if I'm gonna be able to run this weekend or not. Does the car feel good enough? And indeed, he felt comfortable enough to bring his number 29 and try to compete with the Z-Max Cars Tour boys here today. Is Williamson so far 13th car out? He'll be in that 13th position, a 16-231 where that number 29 clocks in. Do we see a pickup here on the second lap? We do, but it keeps that number 29W in the 13th position. So Paul Williamson, track champion here a year ago, right now sits in the 13th spot. 
Speaking of track championships, here's a driver who captured top honors at the Hickory Motor Speedway last season, also a track champion at the Florence Motor Speedway, which we will visit a little bit later on this year. Driving the Velasta per your tank lines in Race City Steel, number 23 for Matt Piercy Racing. Out of Full Shear, Texas, this is that of Cade Brown. Tied for 13th in points, has one top 10 on the season. It came at the track in which he knows so well Hickory last week. He came home seventh. We'll see what he's got in store here. His first lap of qualifying, and it will be third fastest for that of Cade Brown. That is going to be a 15 9 2 4. We talk about how close the field is when it comes to Thunder Road Harley-Davidson pole qualifying. Top four separated by less than a tenth of a second as Brown comes to the line and he will rest on the 15, 9, 2, 4, 57 thousandths of a second off the quick time and third in the running order. And again, another car that showed very well in terms of race pace over the last couple of days. I think that number 23 car is certainly one that we'll have to watch throughout the proceedings here this evening at New River All-American Speedway, as well as the driver who coming off of that corner that he just left nearly had his first Cars Tour win back here at this racetrack last fall, driving the 04 Affordable Heating and Air, Bessemer Tire and Auto, and Bassett Gutters Chevrolet at a Winston-Salem, North Carolina. This is Ronnie Bassett Jr. who will receive the white flag, and Bassett's first trip around puts him 11th fastest so far. Started fifth in this race one year ago and got to chat with Ronnie a little bit earlier on today. Was very confident in terms of the race pace that he feels like this car has, but as far as qualifying is concerned, he is able to find some more here on his second trip around. 15996 will improve him a trio of positions up into the eighth spot for now. Next driver on the racetrack, of course, began the season with disappointment by missing the field at Southern National Motorsports Park, but rebounded very nicely at a place in which he has a track championship, Hickory Motor Speedway, last week with a top 15 finish in what was his first start of the year. In the KC Elliott Attorney at Law, GXS Raps and High Rock Vodka number 37 for Jimmy Moore in Racing and his own team out of Claremont, North Carolina. This is, of course, car number 37 of Landon Huffman. They towed the merch trailer out east with them here this weekend. And for Huffman, his first time around is not going to be what they were looking for. That is a 16.372 for that of Landon Huffman as they continue to massage and work on this race car that is new to them for 2024. Big slide off turn four to the checkered flag. And that is not going to help him much. The second lap will actually be a little bit faster, but Huffman will remain 16th of the 16 cars that have been out of the racetrack so far. Turns things over to this entry out of the Carroll Speed Shop and wanted to give a shout out after his effort at Hickory Motor Speedway one week ago. He broke a power steering hose that if you remember in that race brought out the first caution of the night in turn two. He was able to woe that car down, keep it together, but a contingent of both Carroll Speed Shop and Chad Bryant Racing crew members helped keep this car out on the racetrack and powered it to a 14th place finish after rectifying that issue. Driving the number two, Crossroads Harley-Davidson Chevrolet out of Oak Ridge, North Carolina. Welcome to the racetrack, Brandon Pierce, whose first lap around is gonna slot that number two car in the 16th position for now, 16.209. Again, for a driver looking to kind of turn the page here in 2024. 16th and 14th, the last two results to speak of, has fared well at this racetrack. The second trip around is going to be a tick slower, so Brandon Pierce out of 17 cars, 16th fastest for now. Another driver who had a big move in the championship standings from race one to two is on the racetrack now. He was 18th in the standings after Southern National, now into the top 10 in points in ninth after starting the year off in a really strong position at Southern National Motorsports Park. Made a transition to AK Performance for Hickory and is now in his second race with that team in the Hefner's Towing and Recovery JHGD Raps, number 95 out of Dallas, North Carolina. Here's Jacob Hefner. Fresh off a strong run just outside the top 10 at Hickory. And his first time lap through comes in at 14th. Hefner is going to come through to complete his second lap this time by. Let's go down to the pits to Pike. Ronnie Bassett Jr. was runner up here in this race one year ago. And Ronnie, you saved tires and waited and waited and waited longer than just about anybody else. How do you manage to maintain that patience over the course of 125 laps? It's pretty tough. You know, you just got to know what your race car will give you. And 
um, how hard to run to, for your car is different for everybody. So uh, we're looking forward to tonight. Um, hopefully our uh, lap time gets us somewhere inside the top 12 here and we'll manage our car and uh, be there at the end. Catching up with Ronnie Bassett Jr. as we will welcome this driver out on the racetrack who is out here by virtue of the rain down and the postponement of this race by three weeks, driving the number three Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet out of Kannapolis, North Carolina. This is Dale Earnhardt Jr. making his first Cars Tour start, the place that is not named North Wilkesboro Speedway in first trip around for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Going to be 16th fastest, 16.160. Asked him yesterday what were his impressions of racing at this racetrack for the first time. He said, fun place. Think it'll be a wild race. Junior, second time around, is going to go a tick slower. So Earnhardt slots in at 16th, but felt great about the race pace that that number three car had, but may have to work his way up from the back of the field, which we saw him do earlier this year in the icebreaker at Florence Motor Speedway. That's the style of racing that he knows and loves, the places in which he knows the driver can make a difference as the connecting piece from the steering wheel and the loud pedal. Here's a driver who's looking to try to shake a bit of a black cloud that's been over him at the start of the first two races of the season. This is the TG Motorsports, ABC Hosiery number one. Driver out of Youngsville, North Carolina is that of Andrew Grady who had a very fast car at Southern National but was involved in a hard crash mid-race and then was swept up in another incident yeah, or last week at Hickory. First time around for Grady, times him in 13th quickest that time through. See if Grady could be one of the few cars to pick it up, enough to pole vault him up into the top 10 as he comes to the line. Second lap for Grady is going to be that of a little bit slower. So Andrew Grady trying to hang on to a potential top 15 running order. So we have about five cars left to go in qualifying. Entering one and two, you can see him swerving his car back and forth, trying to get a little bit of heat in those tires before starting his first lap in single car qualifying. Current championship points leader by virtue of his second place finish at Southern National Motorsports Park and a fourth place finish at Hickory a week ago. Drive the number 22, autos by Nelson, Blue Ridge Color, and Town Bank Toyota out of Hampton, Virginia. This is Connor Hall. Won his maiden cards tour race here at this racetrack two years ago. Hall first time around. He's been fast all weekend, but uncharacteristic here of Connor Hall. 19th fastest, 16.178 trying to find some speed in this number 22 autos by Nelson Toyota. A slide off to the fourth corner. We'll see if this second trip around is going to be faster. And indeed, a big pickup there that will at least put him in the top 10 for now, 16.034. But Connor Hall going to have to come from deeper in the field than I think we would have been expected. He's going to try to hang on to a top 10 spot with four cars to go. Here's a driver who's one for one in terms of ZMAX cars to his starts and Thunder Road Harley Davidson Pole Awards in the King's Custom Panels, Rent Source, and Car Quest number 62 for Kevin Harvick Incorporated. This is that of Landon Lewis getting his second opportunity to wheel this race car in 2024. Of course, he'll be sharing this car with the likes of Lane Riggs, Josh Berry, William Sawalich. Now it is Lewis who has a chance to come out here and see what he can do at New River All-American Speedway. First time around for that of Landon Lewis is going to be 18th in the running order with a 16-1-3-4. We saw Connor Hall, the most recent car on the racetrack, pick up in a big way. Lewis is hoping for something of similar fashion as he comes to the line. And as Lewis comes to the checkers, he will pick up, as a matter of fact, up to 13th. So not quite to the top 10, but Landon Lewis will clock in with a 16-0-4-4. Had a lot of strong cars go later in this qualifying session, but as we continue to work on, uh, and again, not saying anything about the racetrack, but as we have continued to send cars out, it seems like just getting a little bit slower on the stopwatch. We'll see if the trend changes with this driver. Back on the late model stock car tour, uh, for her third time here in 2024. Had a couple of starts in the Pro Late Models already, but driving the number 71, Team Chevrolet, Wheeler Trucking and Victory Custom Trailer Chevrolet. A drive to Michigan, this is the number 71 of Katie Hettinger, whose first time will clock in in that 23rd spot as she was the 23rd car out on the racetrack, 16-3 flat for the number 71 of Katie Hettinger. Going to move over to her family-owned race team for both entries in the Pro Late Models and Late Model Socks in 2024. And Hettinger not able to go faster 
on her second trip around. So it looks like just the two cars left. Single car qualifying here at New River. Here's a driver who turned a lot of heads at Hickory Motor Speedway last week, despite coming up just shy of a top 10 effort. Out of Parker, Colorado, for a family-owned team in the Liberty Puzzles, driver tees, all temperatures control number 24. This is that of Cody Dempster, who's looking to make his second career Cars Tour start. After missing the show at Southern National, the 11th place effort, Dempster told me, was something in which they have certainly been hanging their hat on. As he works his way through three and four, we'll see what Dempster has here on his first time lap, and it is 19 so far, the 16 one four, zero. This wheelman commutes back and forth from Parker, Colorado to his race venues, while the car they don't necessarily have to haul so far. They do keep it local to where the Z-Max Cars Tour runs. As he smokes the tire going into turn number one, Dempster is going to pick it up just a little bit, up to 18th for that of Dempster, who was looking to build off of the effort he had one week ago as the final car hits the racetrack. 25th car gonna launch off of pit road and glad to see this driver back behind the wheel of his normal paint scheme here in 08. After what happened to Hickory a week ago with the hung throttle, he is back in his regular RNS race car driving the 08 per your tank lines and Fayetteville heating and air conditioning 08 Ford out of Raleigh, North Carolina. This is Deep McCaskill. Has plenty of success at this racetrack before. In fact, in 2022, started second, and well, he finished second as well in that effort two seasons ago. Finished eighth here to a visit to this racetrack in 2023. Next trip around, checkered flag in hand for McCaskill, who stays 20th fastest, and in fact, ran about three tenths off of his opening lap there on that second go around. So these drivers, a trend here, Eric, they slowed down as we continue to go through Z-Max Cars Tour qualifying, but at the end of it all, it is Butterbean Queen, who looks as if he's won the Crossroads Harley-Davidson pole here this afternoon. Second year in a row, he can call himself a pole sitter here at New River All-American Speedway. The question now becomes, will the outcome be the same? Remember last year, led only 14 laps in route to what was a victory, which many would possibly say is what spearheaded him into the chance to fight for the championship all the way down to the season finale at Caraway one year ago. Butterbean said they're still trying to dig their way out of the hole and right the ship, if you will. And he's looking for the chance to be able to come out here and pick up what could be his first win of the season. Joining him on the front row, as he did at Southern National Motorsports Park, is going to be that of Brent Cruz. Cade Brown with a very strong qualifying effort third. Bobby McCarty fourth. And Blake, the momentum just keeps on rolling for that of Minnie Tyrell, who was fifth fastest in the qualifying session. You know, I got to say, I think it's something about just this tire, his mental approach, everything clicking for this number 81 team. And... You know, it's hard, it's hard to bet against him right now. He, Chad McCombie, several drivers that have really shown up here at the beginning of 2024. And this is a season-long championship, being able to figure out this tire, this configuration, everything that these drivers and teams are working towards. It's going to pay dividends if you're one of the first few teams to figure it out and you have a heck of a driver behind the wheel. And that number 81 team certainly does. Rest of the top tens, he's out of Carson Quapple six. Bryce Applegate, second race in a row where he's yeah, had a great qualifying what an effort, effort. for that 45 team. Seventh for that of the Simpsonville, Kentucky native. Ronnie Bassett Jr. also trying to right the ship, if you will, after what he would classify as a bit of a slow start to 2024. He, he timed in eighth. Trayton Lapsovich continues what's been a very impressive rookie campaign so far, ninth. And our points leader in that of Connor Hall in the Nelson Motorsports number 22 takes you through your top 10 cars. We heard from him a little bit earlier talking about how he reflected on the success here one year ago. He's off to a good start here tonight, Pike. He's with our pole sitter, Brendan Butterbean Queen. Butterbean Queen, your Thunder Road Harley-Davidson pole winner for the National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 250 at New River All-American Speedway for the Z-Max Car Store presented by Soundgear. How about the deja vu right now compared to September? I love it. Um, you know, this year is getting harder and harder, and we didn't know uh, – if we get a pole and if we get a win, then obviously we got one of them done and we got to keep the streak alive. We need to we need a win tonight, but uh, Lee Boy of Performance brought a bad, fast, best repair dot net Toyota Camry. And I just can't thank everybody at uh, TRD for all they're doing behind the scenes with me. Um, obviously the whole Lee Pulliam team and bestrepair.net that David West Motor was hooked up there. 
Uh, it ain't getting easier, buddy, but we're gonna enjoy this, and our work's not done. And obviously, we wanna win. We, we give up the pole to win, but we take both if we can get it. I figure there's an all-star special somewhere in his mind that's motivating him to try and go back to the cookout victory lane. Number threes that will definitely be cheering for that driver right there. Hats off to everyone here at the New River All-American Speedway. The announcement came out on Monday morning, and they went ahead and they revamped the program that was given out to the race fans here when they arrived. They went into full preparedness mode to make sure that they had enough staff, security, and everybody all hands on deck to make sure that things are running as smoothly as possible. There's several people who are wearing numerous hats, including that of, even if you start at the top with track ownership, with that of Anthony and Tanya Goodyear and everything that they've done. Andy Marquis, who put out several press releases all throughout the week. He's been serving as a public address announcer, track photographer, checking on all the drivers for the support division as they get set to roll <laughs> off. It has been all hands on deck here at this facility, and it is a tremendous venue. If you have not been here before, the full schedule and details is available on the website. This is pretty much one of the kickoff events on the 2024 season for the folks here at New River All-American Speedway. And boy, oh boy, they've got a lot of big races still to come on the season. Please check out the full schedule and details and Blake if I don't have something on my calendar for a race in which they're running here this definitely seems like a place that I can come out with my family they can spend some time at the beach I can spend some time at the racetrack or I can bring them here to the venue <laughs> as we have fans of all ages all the way around this pit area as you saw right there getting set to see what is going to be a thrilling third event of the 2024 Z-Max Cars Tour season presented by Sound Gear and I couldn't think of a better venue than here at New River All-American Speedway. With that, let's not wait anymore and let's introduce you to our 25 car starting grid for the National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 125. And starting in the 25th position for the Z-Max Cars Tour presented by Sound Gear, driving the number 71 Team Chevrolet, Wheeler Trucking and Victory Custom Trailer Chevrolet from Dryden, Michigan. We'll kick things off with Katie Hedinger. Starting in the 24th position tonight, and a correlation between Jimmy Moore Racing and his family-owned entity out of Claremont, North Carolina, and the Casey Elliott attorney at law, High Rock Vodka and GXS Raps number 37, Landon Huffman. Starting tonight from the 23rd position, driving the number two, Crossroads Harley Davidson, Grand Atlantic Resorts, and Josh Wine Chevrolet out of Oak Ridge, North Carolina, Brandon Pierce. Starting in 22nd position tonight, the hometown hero of New River All-American Speedway, reigning track champion, making his Cars Tour late model stock debut in the Pure Country Farms, number 29 out of Magnolia, North Carolina, Paul Williamson. And rolling off 21st, the NASCAR Hall of Famer making his third Cars Tour start. Driving the number three, Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet out of Kannapolis, North Carolina, Dale. Earnhardt Jr. Starting in the 20th position tonight, making his 99th career car store late model stock start. 2016 champion in the per year tank lines, RNS race car 08 out of Raleigh, North Carolina, Deke McCaskill. On the inside of row 10, he led 47 laps here a year ago. Driving the number 15, WG Speaks, and Ream Ford for RNS Race Cars out of Mechanicsville, Virginia, Logan Clark. Rolling off in 18th position tonight, fresh off a solid effort at Hickory, driving for his family-owned and Colorado-based race team in the Liberty Puzzles and all temperatures controlled 24, Cody Dempster. And starting in the 17th position, now driving for AK Performance in the number 95 Hefner's Towing and Recovery Chevrolet from Dallas, North Carolina, Jacob Hefner. Starting in the 16th position, making her much anticipated Cars Tour return in the JBL Mobile One and Mincy's Graphics number 55 for Lee Pullian Performance out of Fort Mill, South Carolina, Isabella Robusto. 
making to a, a return to one of his favorite racetracks, starting tonight in the 15th position, drive the number one ABC Hosiery and Apparel in Gildan Chevrolet out of Youngsville, North Carolina. It is Andrew Grady. Starting in the 14th spot from McCombie Elliott Racing and the Aaron Sales and Lease and Elliott Properties number 16. That fresh off a podium at Hickory out of Supply, North Carolina, Chad McCombie. Fresh off a pole position at Hickory and starting in 13th tonight, driving the number 62, Keen Custom Panels Toyota out of Supply, North Carolina, Landon Lewis. Rolling off in the 12th position, making his fourth career Cars Tour late model stock start. In the per year tank lines, Kenneth Daniel Roofing and GXX Raps number 11 for Mike Dawn Racing, Buddy Isles. And just outside the top 10 in the 11th spot, driving the number 15, Leisure Time Rental Chevrolet for his family owned racing operation from Statesville, North Carolina, Ryan Millington. Into the top 10 we go, and the driver starting in 10th position tonight in the autos by Nelson, Blue Ridge Color, and Town Bank number 22. Scored his first career win here in 2022, and your current points leader, it is the 22 of Connor Hall. And in the ninth spot, you'll find the number 77, Ivram Chad Bryant Racing Machine out of Ontario, Canada, Traden. Lapsovich. Starting in the eighth position, a driver with his family owned race team out of Winston Salem, North Carolina, came oh so close to winning this race last year. In the best of a tire and auto, affordable heating and air in Bassett Gutters 04, Ronnie Bassett Jr. Another strong start for this driver in the seventh position, wheeling the number 45, Louisville Dryer Company Chevrolet from Simpsonville, Kentucky, Bryce Applegate. Rolling off in the sixth position, two-time and defending Cars Tour champion in the late model stock ranks. Fresh off a fourth place finish in his NASCAR Xfinity Series debut in the Bass Pro Shops Junior Motorsports number eight, Carson Quapel. And now to meet your top five starters, rolling off in fifth, driving the number 81, Convenience Tire and Auto, and Mini T's Tire and Auto Chevrolet from Manassas, Virginia, Mini Tyrell. Outside of row number two in the fourth spot, three-time Cars Tour late model stock champion in the Sterling Building Group, Black Acid Apparel and WG Speaks Ford for RNS Race Cars, Bobby McCarty. And the inside of row two, you'll find the number 23, Velasta, per your tank lines and Race City Steel Chevrolet from Full Shear, Texas, Cade Brown. To the front row we go, and second time this season, this driver has started on the outside pole. Third in championship points and what is his first full-time foray in late model stock cars. In the Mobile One Toyota for Kevin Harvick Incorporated, Brent Cruz. And rolling off from the top spot, his seventh Thunder Road Harley Davidson Pole Award with a time of 15.867 seconds. Driving the 03 Best Repair Service Toyota for Lee Pulliam Performance from Chesapeake, Virginia, Brendan Butterbean Queen. And that is your 25 car strong starting field with 125 laps lying ahead for all competitors in front of a packed house here at New River All-American Speedway. Drivers starting to make their way to their cars. Last minute preparations being addressed by the race teams before we get set to let them loose for one of the most anticipated races of the season. The National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 125 for the Z-Max Cars Tour presented by Sound Gear. The green flag is coming up right after this.
stock car racing, every second matters, and you have to have the right fuel so your car can run at maximum efficiency. It's the same way with our bodies. What we consume can make or break our health. So that's why I take Velasta, the most powerful natural antioxidant on the planet. It's like juicing a thousand carrots, a thousand tomatoes, and over 1,200 cups of blueberries per day. It helps give me the energy I need to get back to doing what I love. So take control of your health. Take Velasta. Every weekend, it seems like we're at a racetrack somewhere, so we're living it, we're doing it. And I think that helps us relate whenever they call, if they need more grip or they need more turn. We, we do it all the time. All of the fixtures we do, from our steering dyno to our rear end straightening jig, it's the same fixture, same tools that we would build a rear end housing that's going to run a NASCAR race as we do a rack or, or a, a steer box to go on a street stop. We treat them all the same way because, I mean, they deserve the same quality. Everybody does. Back with you here from New River All-American Speedway. A lot going on on Flow Racing all the time. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the upcoming week and everything that's going on here on Flow Racing. On April 16th, you have the Kubota High Limit Racing Series at Red Dirt Raceway. April 18th, you'll find the Lucas Oil MLRA Late Models race at Cedar County Speedway. Three straight days of straight line racing. April 18th through the 20th, it's the PDRA Mid-Atlantic Showdown. The Kubota High Limit Racing Series returns once again, this time from Southern Oklahoma Speedway on April 13th. USAC East Coast Sprints Race at Lincoln Speedway will take place on April 19th. And April 20th, the 410 Sprint Cars compete at Lincoln Speedway. And also on April 20th is the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Racing Series opening weekend at Bowman Gray Stadium. And of course, for more information on everything going on and that's streaming live on this platform, head to flowracing.com slash events. Again, that's flowracing.com slash events. Might hear a familiar name on that Bowman Gray Stadium broadcast throughout the <laughs> season one, which you might be here with us in tent. He is from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and you might hear his voice in the not-too-distant future. <laughs> Maybe we've given it away at this point. But as you can see here, drivers are making their way to their cars. Scheduled start time for this race to go green about a little less than 20 minutes from now, so it may give us a chance to hear some last-minute and last-moment thoughts from some of the drivers before they get set to do battle at a racetrack that is already throwing all of us so many variables. There is one veteran driver who is standing by with that of James Pike and Chad McCombie. Chad, you had a very, very, I think, important for your team run at Hickory last week. There have been a lot of cases where you've had speed and then something's gone wrong, finishing something come around. So what's the atmosphere been like uh, around the garage, around the shop, just building up to this weekend at New River in light of the podium finish at Hickory? Well, I mean, it's certainly momentum, and I think that, you know, this is one of my favorite venues that, that we visit all year long, so I uh, wish we were a few rows further forward on the start, but, um, you know, I think that that momentum hopefully parlays into to a good result tonight. All we got to do is finish these races, and I think we're going to get good finishes, so um, we'll, we got a little bit of work out, cut out for us tonight, but um, this is a long race, and, and nobody really knows exactly how it's going to play out with a new tire and, and this challenging surface, so we shall see. What's your take on the new tire? I think it's just it's just another tire. Um, the goal is still to make it go as fast as you can. It it maybe has some different characteristics. Um, I'm a fan of fall off, and it it maybe goes the other way a little bit, and and doesn't necessarily give you that. But um, so I think the race will play out slightly different. But this surface is so abrasive. I think that it'll be the same game plan we've had previous years. And the trash shank definitely makes it challenging to one of the few trials we go to on the schedule. Yeah, but it works out really well. I, th I think it creates a lot of opportunities for side by side racing and you know the, the surface alone with the tire wear I think has goers and comers. So um, you have opportunities to, to make moves here and um, it keeps everything exciting for everyone. 
Chad McCombie with a little bit of work to do, but uh, Pace Car doesn't seem too far away from here, Eric and Blake. So figure he puts it together. He'll have an opportunity to run as well as he has in some of our other races that we've had here at New River in the past. Well, again, what was it last week at Hickory Motor Speedway? It was all the talk of we've hardly ever had a winner in 20 races that we've run previously at Hickory Motor Speedway that anybody had won a race from outside the top 10. Guess where our winner came from last week? 11th place in Connor Zillish. So as much as we harp and say that qualifying is such a determining factor, we have seen the shift this year where, yes, you want the track position, and we've heard a lot of talk about how much different of a race are we going to see this season with this new tire. But, yeah, I think there's still plenty of hope for these drivers. If you're outside the top six, if you're outside the top ten, you still have a great shot of going to cook out victory lane tonight. And while the new tire, of course, is one of the biggest talking points, not, not necessarily because it is just something new that's been introduced, but for the sense of that, it's, it's a bit of an unknown, especially at places like this. But Chad also alluded, and Pike did as well, to the unique layout of this facility. Not either end of the racetrack is not similar as, as the other. It's going to be different no matter how you approach this venue. And that really challenges these teams to come up with a setup that works all the way around this racetrack. And as we talk about the way in which the handling is going to change overnight, that's going to impact the way in which these drivers approach these corners and the trajectories in which they take. And that, too, will create a little bit of that comer and goer experience in which Chad McCombie was just talking about. So it's all the more reason to make sure that you are fully stocked on your food, your beverage, and you are not ready to walk away from what's about to be quite the thrilling event here. As you see, the cars are lined up. You're inching closer to the start of racing action here from the New River All-American Speedway. You're watching live on Flow.
Z-Max Cars Tour Late Model Stocks presented by Sound Gear is set for its third visit to New River All-American Speedway, but perhaps not a bigger event that has taken place in this series at this racetrack thus far as we are set for the National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 125 to get set off in just a couple of moments. Blake Michaelis, Eric Brennan, James Pike down trackside gathering all of the stories for us and some downtime here, Eric, as we allow, again, some fans that are continuing to work their way into the facility to be able to get to their seats here for the starting time. But as far as what we're looking forward to in this race, what is it that you think we'll be looking at? For me, it's managing pace versus track position. We've been talking about this tire all night and how it's a bit of a curveball and a variable that the teams do not have much information on. So the question becomes, what's more important, maintaining your stuff to the end of the race, or do you want to be up front and have that all-important track position? Position. Judging by the pit area, qualifying mattered the most here today than it ever has in what is a three-race history with the Cars Tour. That's going to be the big question to drivers and teams. What matters more, saving your stuff or being up front? And I think we heard a little bit of indecision, not indecision, but just not knowing what to expect there from Chad McCombie a little bit earlier in terms of strategy. We heard it from Dale Earnhardt Jr. after his qualifying run. Your spotter is going to be vital to the communication of what exactly is going on. We've known how this race has played out in the past. How is it going to play out here in this race? It is vital that the spotters, the Charlie Browns, the Brad Newmans of the world have constant up-to-date communication on what everybody is doing and how they want to play this race. They are going to be an integral part of the strategy that unfolds here at New River All-American tonight. Everything from how they're running, from where they're positioned on the racetrack, what line's moving where, and who's running what strategy. But Blake, I think it's time for us to put our money where our mouth is. Who do you got winning this thing? Well, you know what? I can't argue with the momentum that this driver has carried into this race. Again, remember, a week ago at Hickory, he was several laps down. He was behind the lead lap. He made it up. Not only did that several times, but then he drove up towards the front of the field. Again, Minnie Tyrell would be looking for his first win since 2021 at Tri-County Speedway, but there's just something about this 81 team that is different this year. He has started up front. He's had a fast car all weekend long. I think tonight's the night that they finally put a stamp on it. Second in the point standings for a reason, but I think he gets max points tonight in the race. Minnie Tyrell, your winner tonight at New River All-American Speedway. And as tradition, and he's got some special guests with him as well. So hard to go against that driver and that team. But I'm going to pick someone who's batting 1,000 as far as his season in 2024. We're, of course, talking about two-time and defending champion that of Carson Guapo. Now, granted, he wasn't with us at Hickory as he was coming home with a top five finish in what was his NASCAR Xfinity Series debut. We talk about the importance of momentum. That's a lot of momentum you could bring with you back to the tour in which he knows and runs so well. And being that he won a championship in 2022, even though he missed a start, the field may be a little bit heavier this year. If he wants to get back on track, it has to happen here tonight. And he looks fast. He's qualified just outside the top five. I'm taking that eight car. Well, we only got one more voice to hear from. It's Pike. Who you got? Eric, I think about this track, and even though we talk to so many drivers and they think that it may be a little bit racier than what we've seen in the past, I think the song remains the same in the end. You still are going to have to save tires. And tonight, I'm looking at a driver who hasn't necessarily proven himself here, but he's proven himself at another racetrack that races very similarly to New River All-American Speedway. And it happens to be a place that the Cars Tour will visit this upcoming August on Labor Day weekend. Kay Brown is the defending winner of the South Carolina 400 at Florence Motor Speedway. It's a track where you have to save tires. You have to manage your stuff in a very similar manner to what I think we're going to see out of the field tonight here at New River All-American Speedway. I think with his third place qualifying run, we've got some evidence that that sort of style translates here. And I think at the end of the night, we can see Cade Brown in cookout victory lane. Not a bad pick. And again, it, it, it's probably one of the hardest things we've had to do since covering this series, Eric, is having to pick a winner. <laughs> it's yeah. so hard every week. I mean, there's 10, 15, heck, there's 25 in the field tonight that I think you could realistically say have a true shot to go to victory lane tonight. And I'll throw in a bit of a wild card there if I will. I'm cheating and I'm making up my own rules as I go here. But we talk about drivers who have experience here, success here. One of them's on the pole and that of Brendan Butter being queen. Ignorance may very well be bliss tonight in terms of what this tire is going to offer and what variables and wrenches are thrown at these drivers and teams throughout the night. 
I got to keep an eye on that at Brent Cruz. He is someone who has proven that he has the pace in order to run well, and he's done it. He's led several laps already this season in what is a return to late model stock car racing with two cars in the field for that Kevin Harvick Incorporated entity. But Cruz is someone, along with his teammate Landon Lewis, who qualified on the pole last time out at Hickory, Cruz is someone who doesn't have that big of a playbook to lean on or rely on when it comes to New River All-American Speedway. That may be the best approach when it comes to how this race is going to unfold and when we may see that bit of a tipping point in terms of performance of your race car and these Hoosier tires. Maybe Brent Cruz and some of the other drivers who don't have all that much experience, they may be the outliers here tonight in terms of being in a position where they're only going to know what they learn tonight. Sometimes knowing what you don't know, well, that, that could work out here for at least one lucky driver here tonight at New River All-American Speedway. It's been two races. Remember, a year ago, it was Ronnie Bassett Jr. and Butterbean who were duking it out last lap, hitting doors, and ended up having a thrilling finish here at this racetrack. We saw the same two years ago in Connor Hall's last race here at this racetrack in Cars Tour competition. He was side-by-side, side, a close finish there. He ends up getting the job done in 2022. Two marvelous visits to this racetrack, and I think with the competition only continuing to ramp up through the years, that we are certainly due to see the same tonight at New River All-American Speedway. Of course, uh, you mentioned a little bit earlier, Dale Earnhardt Jr. We know that qualifying, not necessarily his strong suit, but he showed well at Florence Motor Speedway earlier this year in the icebreaker. Ended up racing his way up through that field, up to a fourth place finish behind his teammate in Carson Quapel. That number three car is going to be really fun to watch as he tries to slice and dice his way up towards the front of this pack. While the pole winner may have won the last two runnings of this race, it's not indicative of the number of lead changes we've had each time. Tonight will be no different. Let's not wait anymore. For you race fans, let's get the engines fired and go trackside. Race fans, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram technician James Kent. On behalf of National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, all employees and crew, join me in putting three to the sky. Get ready to praise Dale, raise some hell. Drivers, start your engines. <laughs> What a sight here at New River All-American Speedways. The fans have been waiting for the last 30 minutes or so since they were introduced to the starting field to hear the sound of engines fired. So many fans, you can see many taking in the moment, making sure that they capture this and remember this moment. You know, so many race fans, when we've come out to these Z-Max Cars Tour races, have talked about, you know, sometimes this feels like the old days in a way. When you see these capacity crowds, you see the quality of the field that you have in front of us, these are the old days when it comes to the Z-Max car store. Earlier on today, we got to hear the words of track owner Anthony Goodyear, who, as we mentioned, took hold of this facility in 2021. And he said time and time again, this is a dream come true. You can see it, you can feel it, and everybody in the grandstands, especially those who have been supporting this racetrack and venue year after year after year, I think we all are in agreement. We are already part of something special we haven't even seen the green flag yet. Now it's time to shift our attention to the race. But my, oh my, Blake, this is going to be a night that I think everybody here and those watching along at home are never going to forget. No, absolutely not. Just take a look at the front of your field. You can see so many drivers that could go to victory lane tonight, starting with your front row, Brendan Queen. Can he get the job done and remain undefeated? Go three for three in his third race here at New River All-American Speedway. Brent Cruz, we know how strong he was at Southern National Motorsports Park. Aside from a late restart, there's a good chance that that KHI Toyota goes to victory lane. Cade Brown, Bobby McCarty can never rule him out at a racetrack like this or even back on row three where you find each of our picks, Mini Tyrell, Carson Guapel, so many names that you could call a victor at the end of the night and so many great stories for us to cover. 
the midfield, you've got drivers like Chad McCombie, who celebrated a podium so far. The aforementioned Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jacob Hefner, so many other drivers. In fact, here is the starting grid, and it will scroll across the bottom portion of your screen. As Blake mentioned, for the second year in a row, Brendan Butterbee and Queen, the pole sitter, and Brent Cruz for the second time this season, lining up on the outside of the front row there in second spot. Again, Queen, the only driver to get down in the 15.8 second bracket. As we look further on back, Cade Brown out of Full Shear, Texas, has had a fast race car all weekend, and Bobby McCarty, smooth and composed, like we always know him to be. He's going to be a threat tonight, along with many Tyrell, who nearly, I think, could go to victory lane tonight. Carson Quapel as well, looking to get back after his deficit in the championship, missing that race at Hickory. Second race in a row, Bryce Applegate with a very good qualifying effort. Ronnie Bassett Jr. came within one corner of winning this race one year ago. Canada straight and Labsevich and Connor Hall, two NASCAR champions from last year in different series, making up road number five. And of course, Ryan Millington, who finally got that elusive top five finish at Hickory last time out. And Buddy Isles Jr. from Mike Darn Racing, trying to keep the momentum rolling. Certainly is as he adapts from dirt racing over to asphalt racing. Wonder how that translates here. As you can see, Randon Lewis, the number 62 Ford, Chad McCombie, two drivers that have shown awfully well running up at the top five in each of our opening races, as well as some drivers I think we could race see race their way through the field and Andrew Grady, Isabella Robusto. Great to see her back on the racetrack. It was one year to this day her last appearance in a late model stock. Remarkable storyline there. Logan Clark led 47 of his career laps in this race one year ago. And Deke McCaskill making career start number 99. And of course, Dale Earnhardt Jr. inside of row number 11 with reigning track champion Paul Williamson, who had the crowd on their feet in driver intros alongside. Remember, Williamson pre-race was saying, you know, it'd be really cool if I'd get to race side by side with Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's going to start side by side with the NASCAR Hall of Famer as Katie Hettinger will make up the back end of row 13 and round out our 25 car field. But before we get going, let's turn things down to James Pike one more time. Blake, we've talked all day about the SC2 compound, but I still have a few more notes on it before we go green flag racing. Yes, it's a little bit harder compound than the F45s we race on here in September. And the difference I've heard amongst the pit road and the garage is that it's a matter of heat wear versus slip wear. The track or the tire, the F45 sort of melts into the track a little bit more. This tire sits on top of the track a little bit more. You can sort of melt it with the way you drive last year. This year, you could be riding more on top of the track, but if you slip it too much, it'll retain heat too, so it may not cool down. If you really wear these things out and get them hot, it's gonna be really hard to get that grip rack. Also, keep an eye on wheel spin, on restarts, especially with the cooler temperatures in the air. Don't think we can rule out the possibility that some drivers may have some issues getting back up to speed. It's a great point there, James. Heck, we saw it in the street stock race a little bit earlier on with Keelan Harvick was trying to make sure that he got through the gears cleanly. And that's something that's a lot easier said than done with the unique shape of this tri-oval, you could really call it, at New River All-American Speedway. You saw just scrolling across your screen a moment ago, that was Brandon Pierce uh, who went down to the pit lane, kind of reminiscent of what we saw with Chad McCombie last week, but he has since gotten back out on the racetrack and joined the field. Also of note, we called Cody Dempster, restarted the 18th position. He will start at the tail end of the field. Unapproved adjustments for that number 24 of Cody Dempster. By the way, he raced all the way through the field at Hickory last night. We'll see if he can do it again. The 113th race of the Z-Max Cars Tour presented by Sound Gear is set to go here in Jacksonville, North Carolina as Jim Bushy will bring the HendrickCars.com pace car down and into the Death Wish Coffee start zone comes Brendan Queen and we are racing for 125 laps here at New River. Queen jumps out, leads the opening pair of laps, and you can really see, especially off of turn two, he got a huge lead. You have to wonder in the back of his mind, is he thinking, maybe I got a little bit too far out there? He backs his pace down a little bit the second lap, and you can see everybody trying to lift and now find their way down to the bottom of the racetrack. 
Brent Cruz using that top line of his advantage to be able to fend off Kane Brown for the second spot. That is until they get back to turn number one. Look at Bobby McCarty thinking about perhaps trying to fill the void that separates the 23 of Brown and the 29 of Brent Cruz respectively as now Mini Tyrell tries to poke his nose and the white 81 up the inside thinks better of it. Cruz still hanging tough on the outside line. You can see how much momentum he's able to carry off that end of the racetrack. Now again, if you were watching film of this race from a year ago, you saw some cars jump up to the outside and they were able to almost at will pass these long line of cars down on the bottom of the racetrack. And if you're watching qualifying a little bit earlier, this is going to be a little bit different, at least in the terms of the beginning portion of this race. Everybody kind of wrapping the bottom right now. And the thinking here is, Eric, you don't want to turn. You want to stay off the throttle. You want to try to make this radius as short as possible. Now, in qualifying, you'll see everybody cracking up off the corner and doing all those things. But the thinking here is early on, you want to keep that tire heat in check. You want to do it by these low exits that we see from everybody but Cruz and McCarty, who haven't found their way down to the bottom yet. Throughout pretty much the entire field, with the exception of a two-car battle at the very tail end of the pack, Every car is committed to the bottom, except for Brent Cruz in the 29 and Bobby McCarty in the 6. Cruz now trying to get that top line to roll to maybe put him in command of this race in that Mobile One Toyota with McCarty right there nudging the back bumper. We mentioned spotter communication and how important that was going to be. And New River is such a unique racetrack because you kind of saw it out of Cade Brown there for just a moment that when everybody's kind of riding single file on the bottom, it can be somewhat deceiving when you try to build up a run, you get a little bit harder in that throttle, you carry that momentum, and you try to make a pass. Kind of plays off of what we were talking about earlier with spotter communication, that being on your toes as a spotter is going to be something that you have to do as he almost got to call Brick Cruz three wide with Bobby McCarty. Yeah, one thing that Cruz has to watch here is and there they go. two wide as McCarty may have cut him a break there, lifting out of the throttle off turn two to not make that a precarious spot for the front runners. Cruz is going to lead at the line here. Butterbean also conceding second spot on the front stretch to get McCarty up into the runner-up position now in the six. And you can see that concerted effort from McCarty who thought this is my opportunity to get down to the bottom of the racetrack. Throttles up a little bit harder than Brendan Queen, you can see the momentum he carries. So Brick Cruz, first lead change we've seen so far tonight at New River. McCarty wrapping the inside that red, white, and blue painting that you see here on the inside. They are all just about touching at the left side doors of these late model stocks. We've completed 10 laps. More side by side that's happening further back in the pack. That's Carson Quapple, his Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet, trying to fend off a couple of drivers, and Bryce Applegate and Ryan Millington. Out of the third, starting to heat up just a little bit there as Mini Tyrell has moved up into the third position as things start to jam up a little oh. bit there on the bottom as McCarty now gets a fender inside of Cruz for the top spot in one. And Cruz gives him the space, but that's what we were talking about earlier, that you'll see these cars going all the way down to the grass to complete that pass, and Cruz almost got in the back of McCarty there. So third lead change, Tyrell almost looked for second. 112 laps to go, new leader at the front of the field. It is the six of Bobby McCarty. And you see how aggressively Cruz trying to cut back down in the trial the last time through to try to cover the spot and not allow Tyrell a chance to get up to and alongside. This is the battle for the runner-up position behind that of Bobby McCarty, who is now our third different leader on the night. As many Tyrell runs there in the third spot, looking to try to move up to second. These three, a couple of car lengths ahead of this battle that is taking place behind them. You can see Quapple starting to back up and, you know, listening to a lot of the conversations, Brandon Pierce, Dylan Wilson talked a lot about it on their big time auto racing podcast earlier this week. If you look back at some of the races that we've had here, you almost see kind of a separation of packs that happen. And we're going to see it right here in this side by side. You see Bobby McCarty up front, Quapple, Millington, Bassett couple of those drivers that are just hanging on to the race lead, but we've seen a fair contingent of cars, Eric, about 10 or 12 or so, pretty much the entire back half of the field that has kind of taken that more conservative approach, and as far as the pace backing down, has really begun to do it. And in terms of lap times, again, 15.8 was Brendan Queen's pole time for the Thunder Road Harley-Davidson Pole Award. Bobby McCarty, your race leader last time, 17.8. 4.05, a second and a half nearly off, but not quite as much as two seconds as, as we've seen here in the past. 
I think you're going to see drivers fall into two buckets, if you will. One that thinks that now is the time to go. The other that thinks they need to conserve. I put Ryan Millington in the bucket of those that want to start moving forward. Carson Quapel in the bucket of those that is trying to conserve just a little bit. As now Tyrell gets moved up off the bottom. Here's the battle for third on the front straightaway. Cade Brown is going to pick up that spot. Bryce Applegate starting to move further forward with the aforementioned Millington. 104 laps to go again we talked about the difference in strategy right now brendan queen he was your pole sitter he is ninth nearly two and a half seconds behind the race leader as things run right now so that really tells you the difference in terms of where drivers are running and what their approach is to this race which again we don't know if that's going to work as quite as well as it did in the past with this new sp2 tire so many of the drivers were I don't want to say confused, but unsure of exactly how this race was going to play out. If you were going to see these drivers who were riding in line, saving, if that's going to be the way to go. I do know, though, looking out on the racetrack, it's a little bit of a difference of what we saw a year ago. Logan Clark, remember, he led 47 laps here last season. He is the last driver on the racetrack right now. So you can see that he may have learned a lesson or so. <laughs> from when we were here last fall, as we can see a side-by-side -side battle for second. Cade Brown on the 23, and Brent Cruz may not put up much of a fight there on the outside, but now 100 laps to go. The good news for that of Cruz is he does have a little bit of room, maybe not much, as they come off turn two to try to cover the spot. Now he's falling back to third, and he will nestle himself there between that of Cade Brown and Minnie Tyrell, who continues to run in the top five spot with Brown now lurking all over the backside of McCarty for the race lead as we see one driver who has elected to kick things into high gear, and that is Landon Huffman, who started hang out back in 24th spot. Huffman is up into the top 10 and looking to get around Carson Quapel for eighth. We talked about the difference in scenery for Landon Huffman coming into 2024. Uh, I heard him talking on Thursday before coming down to practice on Friday. He arrived with three team members. To practice yesterday it was he his father and one other crew member on that race car as we could see a new race leader fourth one we've had so far tonight with 98 laps to go 23 of Kate Brown looking awfully strong up front but you know if you watch Landon Huffman's blog on his YouTube channel last year he kind of employed this same strategy of going up and trying to pass a couple of cars going high going low found himself in the top five in that race uh, before eventually selling for 16th in his start for Nelson Motorsports a year ago. And while we see a little bit of shuffling amongst the front runners, that's opening the door for the top line to start rolling. Bryce Applegate in the 45, outside of Ryan Millington in the 15, Landon Huffman to join, and now it is McCarty who is trying to conserve a little bit on the bottom, and here comes Tyrell trying to jump up outside, nearly three wide for third, as we are now double wide, three rows back with Tyrell trying to go to the point on the back straightaway. What a move by Tyrell, and you can see it's a conscious decision to try and go up towards the front. You can see a little bit of damage just on the nose of that number 81 car, but do we have a fifth lead change at New River All-American already tonight? Side by side for the race lead, a couple of car lengths clear of Bobby McCarty in third, and indeed we do. Mini Tyrell, the number 81, leads his first lap since Florence Motor Speedway a year ago. Earlier on today in the driver's meeting, Mini Tyrell, along with his father, family, and race team, were present to acknowledge the drivers and teams that they are going to exercise what has been a much publicized philanthropic effort for that of Tyrell throughout his racing tenure at Dominion Raceway on June 15th. Every driver and team is on board to support him there as they welcome several families who find themselves under circumstances in which they could use a bit of assistance while navigating through tough times. And Tyrell, who has been very proud to host those families, not just at Dominion, but even a few in which he's welcomed back here to New River tonight. And he would love nothing more than to take a trophy home with him as Landon Huffman is up to second. Huffman was seven tenths of a second faster than the last lap run by Mini Tyrell. Huffman, you can see how much he is wheeling it off the corner as Tyrell has a pretty comfortable lead. It's nearly up to half a straightaway right now, but Landon Huffman looking to take his 37 High Rock Vodka Chevy, and he's gonna go right to the point. Huffman in the three and four, six lead change of the night in 35 laps. Landon Huffman now at the point at New River. Is this New River or is this Talladega with the way in which these drivers <laughs> are coming and going? This is remarkable. Talking to Landon Spotter, Charlie Brown, he said, hey, if some drivers are going to ride, we're going to go. That has been their game plan, and they are executing I believe him. in the biggest <laughs> way. 
Looks as though Chad McCombie may be on that same game plan. He started 14th and is up into the top five for the first time tonight. And he's not done yet, working over Cade Brown in the 23. Well, and again, at least looking at the scoring charts, it looks like, I mean, Huffman's four tenths, five tenths, six tenths faster than a lot of these drivers out here. Again, we're not too far away from what would be the first shitty coolers competition caution of the evening. But Huffman, at this pace, if he keeps it up, there are a couple drivers in the back of the field. All it takes is one to kind of set that pace a little bit faster, and everybody's going to have to respond because they don't want to go a lap down. End up with a bit of a roadblock, where, like what Bobby McCarty finds himself in here. Now he's kind of trapped behind the side-by-side -side cars of Ryan Millington and that of Chad McCombie as they continue to fight for positions up in the top five. Bryce Applegate still having a very strong showing there in fourth in the 45. As it is all Landon Huffman who has checked out the biggest lead we've seen anybody have all night. This is third on back between Cade Brown and a Hornet's Nest. Bryce Applegate, we mentioned some of the strong starts that he has had already as he came out east again from Colorado to be able to compete in, his, in the late model stocks. Again, was uh, looking at some of the designs they have for the 24 t-shirts that I'm sure many fans out here at the racetrack over the course of the Fan Fest and the autograph signing that we had here perhaps took a noting of is that, well, we're coming out east. Is that of Cody Dempster, but Bryce Applegate right now in the 45 out of Simpsonville, Kentucky. What an impressive performance that he has put on early in this race. is three wide in one and two. McCovey on the top side, Grady and McCarty, three drivers who have been around this series for an awfully long time. And McCarty trying to make his way by Carson Quapple, who's just kind of been patient like you would imagine Quapo to be. And Andrew Grady is a name that we have not mentioned here tonight so far. He too is up into the top 10 after two races, one of which that destroyed his TG Motorsports race car at Southern National Motorsports Park. He is desperately trying to right the ship after showing so much pace to start this season. Maybe tonight is the night in which it all comes together for he and that operation as they've been working so hard but nobody has worked harder so far in this race than that of Landon Huffman, who has charged from nearly the back of the field up to the race lead and walking away with a potential competition caution coming at the end of this lap. As it would stand now, no driver is going to go a lap down. They've all stayed on the lead lap, and indeed we will see the first shitty coolers caution of the evening after 45 consecutive green flag laps. It will come out for the first time, which, you know, historically has not been a race in which we've seen a lot of early yellows with some of the differing strategy going on, but Landon Huffman and that High Rock Vodka Chevrolet getting some good TV time out here at New River All-American Speedway tonight. He's first, Kate Brown second, Tyrell just got edged out by that number 23 uh, for the second position just before that caution flag came out. You heard Chad McCombie mention in his pre-race interview, you're going to have some comers and goers. He was not kidding. It has been remarkable to watch some of these drivers drive up through the pack with Huffman being 